the Ultimate Performance Max Optimization Guides for brand owners that run their ads themselves for teams that don't have a large ad spend and uh, don't have an agency running their campaigns on their behalf. Therefore, they run the campaigns uh, themselves. Here's the guide for you. Here's how you optimize your Google Ads Performance Max campaigns. This is originally from our consulting package. Uh, we not only run ads in behalf of huge brands, but we also consult smaller brands on how to run the ads themselves if they don't have the budget to afford agents. If he's on top of their current ad spend, they just want to put all their ad spend on campaigns. So this is a great option because we are basically skill transferring everything that we do at Galeria Advertising uh, Leadways uh, to these brand owners. We are giving them all the SOPs, all the strategies, and we are actually building the campaigns with them during this two to two hour uh, consulting call. And this is the exact document which I'm going to show to you in a second. This is the exact document we share with them after this consulting call on how to manage their campaigns from that moment onwards. So in the last video, we talked about search campaigns. You can find uh, on my channel. Uh, we talked about daily, weekly, and monthly optimizations. Here for the Performance Max, we have the weekly and monthly optimizations. We don't have daily optimizations because Performance Max is a campaign that requires time. And uh, so that we are not changing things on a daily basis on this campaign. We are changing things on a weekly and monthly basis. Basis. So without any further ado, I'm straight into the guide. So uh, weekly optimizations here, what you're doing is you want to adjust your columns uh, and adding conversion metrics such as conversion value, conversion value by cost, which is your ROAS, for a more assertive analysis of your campaign results compared to the previous week and the same uh, week in the, in the uh, previous year. There's a typo here if there is an account history. So what you're doing here is you're organizing your uh, dashboard, your Google dashboard, so you can see data clearly so that you can compare to, you can understand if it makes sense. So you're basically adding your convert, your cost, your conversion value, and your revenue to analyze against your previous week or the same, uh, the same period in the previous year. Now, check the products that are performing well and poorly. That's on a weekly basis. You wanna make sure you're always checking which products are performing well and poorly, and you do that under the products section of the Performance Max campaigns inside of your asset groups. Also check the products that are getting more impressions as it is an indicator of new assets that can be added to the asset groups. So the idea here is very simple. The products that are getting the most uh, impressions on Performance Max are usually products that have a high search volume. So what you can do here, uh, this opens an opportunity for you to have specific asset groups where you're going to create a whole asset group around those products or around each of these products, separate ad groups, and all the assets, images, videos, headlines, and uh, maybe a, a promotion and offer there uh, is around that specific product. This, uh, and then you can test out, see how this asset group performs and go from there. Che and then check the combinations tab uh, and see what the most frequent combination performance max is uh, selecting and showing. Under the, the, the combinations tab, you can see uh, uh, performance max, as you know, works as a combination of assets. It's doing multiple split tests each and every day. And uh, you can look at the main uh, combinations, the, the, the ones that are being shown most often, and you can see if it actually makes sense, if all the images, if the headlines, if the descriptions, the combination of these three assets do make sense or not. If not, you can simply remove and remanage the, uh, the way it's being shown. Check if, if it makes sense and make adjustments if necessary. Now, that's about it for your weekly optimizations. We are also going to talk about budget in a separate section down here, increasing daily budget for scaling. So now we are not talking about budget. We are talking about other things inside the campaign. Now, let's talk about monthly optimizations. Check through the listings tab by asset groups, the products that are performing well and poorly, always guided by key metrics, conversions, conversion value, and conversion value by cost, which is your ROAS. Analyze the products that had low impressions, this is very, very, very important, high cost, and little or no conversion. So you're looking for your worst 
performers. Exclude those that do not make sense or create new asset groups with specific copy and audience signals for the product that performed poorly. Here you have a decision to make. You can either exclude these products from the campaign uh, because it's spending money and it's not converting. If you do think that on your store it's a strategic product, if you do think that that product has some potential, what you can do here is build an asset group for those products that are performing poorly or these, uh, this specific product that is performing uh, poorly and add assets around it, maybe some YouTube videos, maybe some uh, imagery around it and see if this changes anything on, your, uh, on that specific product. If not, you can simply exclude and have a more clean campaign structure. Also increase daily budget progressively as soon as the campaign is maintaining the stability of conversions for continuous growth, which we are going to touch more in detail in the, um, in the budget section. Now let's talk about asset groups optimization. This is very, very, very interesting. Check the performance of each individual asset in each asset group. Replace those with poor performance and extract insights from those that are performing well. So uh, to, to check that you go to the asset groups within the performance max and then to view details. You have a, an option to view details, sort by the performance column. And you have a performance column that will give you the status of that product, uh, that asset specifically. So uh, from your five, from the 20 uh, images that you uploaded on this campaign, those are the best performance, uh, per, uh, performing ones. These are the, the ones that are performing uh, uh, average and those are the worst performers. What you can do here is simply remove all of the worst performance and add more based on what you see, the patterns you see on your best performers. And then you have a whole campaign. Uh, again, you, you wait until the campaign uh, spends on these new assets and gives you the new status of that, uh, that asset. And then you'll be able to see again, you can always be cleaning the campaign with better performing assets and that way increasing uh, results uh, overall. That's what you want to be doing here in terms of asset groups optimization. This is the main thing and that includes images, YouTube videos and titles and descriptions. So the, the performance max campaign forces you to work on your copy, on your assets, on your images, on your videos uh, and uh, overall on uh, your marketing material which is very, very, very nice. Now every time a new asset group is added or fully edited, maybe you do a full change of assets, maybe you do a f uh, you change half the images or half the YouTube videos, go to the, uh, um, it's important to wait 14 to 30 days for an effective analysis of results, especially if you have a low budget. If you have a low budget, you need to give the campaign time to spend to have insights on what's actually working the best, what's actually not working that well. There is usually an initial drop in results after you do a big change, followed by a significant improvement, which is completely normal. You just have to wait until uh, the campaign catches up again. Some procedures in case the campaign do not run have low impressions or in case of rapid daily budget expenditure before the end of the day. So here are some common problems uh, some of our clients have and uh, how to fix it. We are pretty much talking about campaigns that are not spending and campaigns that are spending too fast. So what you're going to be doing here is monitor impressions, clicks and CTR metrics. Those are the metrics we want to be looking for. The idea is to have a uniform distribution of impressions throughout the day. Impressions should be tracked along with the daily account budget. So if you are having a campaign that is spending the whole budget in the morning, for example, that's not quite ideal because you still have opportunities in the afternoon that you are not exploring because you already spent all of your budget. So for example, if a campaign has a daily budget of 30, this study must be spent uniformly throughout the day. If the campaign is having low impressions, expand audience signals by adding more relevant options for your business. So if, if, if your campaign is not spending, what you want to do is give more targeting options to Google. Also change the bidding from maximizing conversions to maximizing conversion value and check for an increase 
uh, in impressions. You want to try to switch your bidding strategy or if you have maximized conversion value, you can switch back to maximize conversion and see if that brings a change in your uh, spending if, if it starts to spend. If the campaign has a target CPA, increase the target CPA gradually. You want to start increasing by uh, low figures and then more if the campaign is still not spending. If the campaign has a target ROAS, you want to decrease the target ROAS gradually and don't worry, it's just until the campaign gets traction. So you are going to accept a lower a ROAS that is a little lower than you, you, you'd be happy with, but at the same time you are giving the campaign space to learn and to start spending and then you can uh, uh, increase your target ROAS or decrease your target CPA. Again, once the campaign is already running and then it tends to keep running that way. If the campaign is having a lot of impressions and fast daily spending, here's what you do if the campaign is spending too much too fast. If you are using maximized conversions at a target CPA, you want to add a little bit of a break to Google. Hey, here are some requirements. Try to stay within this target CPA and then Google will readjust the budget accordingly. Google will be smarter with the way it spends your budget. If you're using maximized conversion value, you add a target to ROAS to the campaign, that way Google will be uh, will think a little more before uh, showing your ads. You will select better the kind of users it's going to show your ad to. Finally, check products in the product section and see if there are any issues such as disapprovals or room for optimization. This is a merchant center optimization. So if you see your products are not performing well, uh, you can also check Google Merchant Center for any disapprovals or errors. You want to make sure to have a clean feed on Merchant Center because those are the products that are being used on your performance max and shopping campaigns. So having a clean feed, having all your products approved, having all the data added to Merchant Center is crucial when it comes to running successful campaigns, which is something we're going to cover in a future video, how to optimize your Merchant Center feed. Now, increasing daily budget for scaling. Uh, we touched on that on the previous video, but I think it's very important to mention again because a lot of brand owners ask me about, uh, okay, how, what, what should I do with the budget? For how, What's the percentage uh, of, of daily increase? Should I increase every day? Should I increase every seven days? How does that work? And here's the best way we found for brands starting out with Google and also at a medium level of spend. Motor campaign performance, you want to check for your campaign per, uh, performance regularly by looking at key metrics, conversions, conversion value, your ROAS, conversion rate, click, impressions, and uh, all the metrics that are very important. Analyze the conversion rate, look at your conversion rates and see if they are meeting your desired targets for sales and revenue. So you're basically looking at your overall performance. Uh, with this spend I have right now, am I getting enough sales? It, it, it's, a, it's a number of sales uh, which I'm happy with, yes or no. Determine daily budget based on results. So based on how your campaigns are performing now, determine how much more you would need theoretically to be spending to reach your goal. So if you are uh, making 500, uh, you're getting 50, 100 orders a day from Google and you need 200 to 300 to reach your goal, then uh, you need, you know you need to increase your spend. Now, you're not going to just double your spend or triple your spend and that's it uh, because Google does not work in a linear way. As you scale, you're going to have a lower ROAS. That's just the normal process of uh, advertising in any investment class. But, uh, and so what you want to do here is follow this uh, structure for increasing ROAS. If, campaigns are, uh, if your campaigns are performing well and reaching your desired conversion rates and results, consider increasing your ad budget to reach a larger, a larger audience and scale your sales and revenue. So you're only increasing revenue once your campaigns are already at a, at a healthy ROAS. So the ROAS uh, reached a certain level and it's consistent. Okay, let's start increasing the budget now. Uh, now, how do you actually go ahead and increase your budget? Uh, for newly launched campaigns or after each optimization, wait for a period of 14 to 30 days to evaluate the results. That's very important. You don't want to be evaluating results one to two days after you launch the campaign or after you made a huge change to the campaign structure. Uh, after this time frame, if the conversion rates and the ROAS are consistent and uh, at a, a level which you are happy with, it is recommended to increase the budget gradually by 5 to 10% every 7 to 14 days. There's no set rule here. You can always uh, increase based on your gut feeling. However, 
Uh, there are some people, that some, some experts out there that are going to tell you, oh yeah, you should increase by 20% every three days. But if you ask them uh, in the last year, in the last, last 365 days, if, uh, if they actually uh, did that, if they actually increased their campaigns by 20% every three days, then they would be spending somewhere around a billion a day now. And we know that that's not exactly how it works. So what we are doing here is we are spending very little every uh, a good amount of days because we want to keep the campaign efficient. We want to keep the campaign, the role as stable. We want to keep everything stable and increase the budget in a realistic way where the campaign will be able to sustain itself over a long period of time. We are not trying to scale to the moon in a month and then have a huge drop in results. We want to build uh, sustainable, uh, scalable, and consistent revenue machines for our clients that are going to deliver results consistently throughout years for years to come, and that's how you do it. You increase gradually as uh, results uh, uh, um, keep consistent. So if you have a consistent ROAS, you have a consistent revenue, then you increase the, uh, ROA, uh, the, the spending by five to 10% every seven to 14 days, and uh, monitoring always your campaign uh, performance and key metrics. You don't wanna have a drop in results, a drop in ROAS, very significant while you increase your budget. Monitor pro progress after increasing our daily budget, keep an eye on our campaign performance for about uh, seven, again, seven to 14 days, and regularly reevaluate to make sure you're getting the results you want in terms of sales and revenue. Optimize campaigns, continuously optimize your campaigns by making changes to targeting, bids, ad copy, assets, and other elements to get the best results from your investment, your ad spend, and maximize sales and revenue. So you're basically uh, applying all these tips I just gave you here, all these weekly and monthly optimizations in, additional, in addition to increasing your budget. So that's exactly how you do it. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you are a brand running uh, Google Ads right now, if you run the ads yourself, if you don't have an agency and you also don't have the ad budget, uh, you want to spend all uh, every possible dollar in uh, ad spend directly, make sure to click the first link in the description and book your consulting call. We are going to skew transfer everything that we implement for our uh, brands doing anywhere between 500,000 to 50 million a year. We're going to skew transfer everything we do for them to you in a two hour um, consulting call, we are going to build the campaigns with you and then we're going to give you this uh, um, material here, this guide for you to be able to manage your campaigns on a daily basis and uh, be able to use all this spend on your campaigns. So I hope this video is valuable. If you want access to this resource, simply comment below. You can comment the word resource or management guide and your Instagram, Twitter or LinkedIn and I'm going to send it over your way. Okay, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.